Good morning, folks. We've got the sun, some seismic hot spots, cool science, and more on the latest sign of Earth's weakening magnetic field. Let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star brought the extension of the southern coronal hole more towards central heliographic longitudes. Northern active region is departing, and another may be incoming near the 8 o'clock position. Solar wind at Earth is very quiet. We've got nothing but minor fluctuations in a modest ambient stream. No surprise whatsoever that geomagnetic conditions remain on the lower end. We've been without bigger quakes lately, but two upticks have caught my attention. All blot echoes here. Learn more about those at quakewatch.net. We also have a cluster in the northwest Pacific. Eyes on those. Up first in the articles, we've got another solar cycle 25 forecast, and yet another one suggesting we're going to have a cycle just about the same as solar cycle 24. That would be another weak cycle to be sure, but... Sure enough, enough to test Earth's weakening magnetosphere over the next five or six years. A big observer's congratulations to Dr. Marcel Pulowski. He was one of the first cosmologists to give us an interview on the problems of dark matter, especially relating to dwarf satellite galaxies. Now this was back when he was at UC Irvine. He's now at AIP Potsdam and has just had his very important and potentially dark matter dashing science funded for a while. It's the biggest exhale a university academic can get. Something very cool up next, night luminosity and the changes over 21 years. There are a significant number of graphics in this one. I'm only showing a fraction of them here. The full article is linked in today's list below the video. It is free to read on archive, and Dr. Small may just illuminate some perspective on how dispersed we are and how much empty space can still be found. This next one is of interest, and especially for those who have considered the fact that altitude changes in a survival scenario or natural disaster may be required. Well, it turns out it will help to know who you are and where your blood came from. They have now demonstrated that while adaptive and genetic changes will come from the stresses of a new environment, if that new environment is only new to you and not your DNA, your body will snap into adaptation much faster. They tried it with chickens in Tibet and then well down the mountains. Those in first-time territory for their DNA struggled during their adaptations, but those returning to ancestral homes did not. This is a fun little reminder that best guesses in science wear certainty masks when they reach our ears and eyes. A core sample in the Arctic has gone back and forth in the literature suggesting it showed a magnetic excursion long ago, while others say it was the full Cron reversal signature. The back and forth continues with their identification in this one as being from a full Cron reversal, and also with a pleasantly surprising reminder in the paper that the Arctic is still a mystery and we don't fully understand what we see there. Up next, folks. The Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy is the main collider with our Milky Way over time, they believe. But now a closer look at its passage times and their believed star formation epochs in the galaxy coincide exactly with one another, including one at the exact time they think the Sun was born. They are suggesting that these collisions send ripples through the galaxy that trigger star formation, and that indeed we may be here in our current scenario because of when that dwarf galaxy crashed through on one of its runs. Now, this is not really that new of an idea. Stripping, shock waves, and star formation during galactic collisions, but always with the actual stars themselves mostly whizzing right past each other without many actual collisions, right? Well, in what will go down as one of the coolest space imaging efforts of the last year, Keck decided to stack Hubble images and then zero in for more detail. This is their idea of what happened. Early on in the cosmos, an ultra-dense proto-galaxy cluster crashed through a much larger one and did so exactly in the center of it. Despite every instance of galactic collision that we know about in space showing plasma and gas stripping, but not a stellar blowout as again most just whiz right past each other, they say the opposite happened here. Of course it did. Of course, the caveat to their best guess is that this is one frame and that's all they're ever going to get. They could take shots of this area for the next hundred years and it's really just not going to change that much. They didn't see any collision, just the cosmic ring of fire and then the smaller satellite galaxies around it. The ring, by the way, once again reminds me of the Russian test they did on the ISS with plasma and zero-g. After the spiral takes form, the eventual stability point is that central void evacuation zone and the material spinning around it. As good a place to start guessing as the perfect center collision that acts unlike any other galactic collision we've ever seen. Ever. Last but not least, folks, we have been digging a lot deeper into the detail of this paper from a few days ago, and what I hinted at in the May 24th show I will now say a bit more definitively now. 
just like the unreal geomagnetic effects in the summer of 2015 and the surprise solar storm of August 2018, the sustained equatorial ionization anomalies, even during the sunspot minimum of the last few years, are a sign that less and less intense space weather is able to do more and more at Earth due to a weaker magnetic shield. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, the full breakdown and a look back at the 2018 event are your latest Deeper Look episode, including a visualization of exactly what part of the Earth is taking those anomalies. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We'll continue tracking every possible sign of the ongoing magnetic disaster. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.